Hey everyone. In the last session we were discussing about the free energy functions and uh, we have learned the concept of Helmholtz free energy. Now there we have mentioned another constraint that is when the system at constant temperature and pressure the process carrying out in such a system can have a new function that is Gibbs free energy or Gibbs energy simply free energy represented by the uppercase g and gibbs free energy can be defined as g is equal to h minus ts where s is the entropy of the system h is the enthalpy of the system and t is the kelvin temperature since all are state functions we can say g is also a state function consider a process in which the system passes from state 1 to state 2 at constant temperature t and constant pressure p if g1 h1 s1 represent respectively the gibbs energy enthalpy and entropy of the system in its initial state 1 and if g2 h2 s2 represents the corresponding values of the system in its final state then we can write the free energy change delta g as g2 minus g1 and we know by definition g is equal to h minus ts so g2 becomes h2 minus ts2 and g1 becomes h1 minus ts1 so we have h2 minus ts2 minus h1 minus ts1 and on rearranging we will be getting h2 minus h1 minus t into s2 minus s1 that is delta h minus t into delta s now we have the expression for free energy change delta g which is equal to delta h minus t delta s now let's look into the physical significance of this free energy prior to that we have to recall something the work may be expansion work or it may also include some other kinds of work which we can term as non expansion work and we know that expansion work is equal to negative p delta v so according to first law of thermodynamics we have this expression that is delta u is equal to q plus w so as we have introduced two types of w or works we have to consider that also here so delta u is equal to q plus w expansion plus w non expansion so we have included both expansion and non expansion works and by substituting the value of negative p delta v for expansion work we will get delta u is equal to q minus p delta v plus w non expansion on rearranging we will get the equation for q which is equal to delta u plus p delta v minus w non expansion we can rewrite this equation as q is equal to delta h minus w non expansion since u plus p v is equal to h or delta u plus p delta v is equal to delta h now we can substitute q with t delta s and which is equal to delta h minus w non expansion how is this possible we know that delta s is equal to q reversible by t so we have this equation for q as t into delta s on rearranging we will be getting delta h minus t delta s is equal to w non expansion Do you remember the expression delta h minus t delta s? Yes, that is the free energy change that is delta g. So we have this equation delta g is equal to w 
non expansion non expansion work is regarded as useful work so we can write this as w useful if work is done by the system in the process it would carry a negative sign therefore delta g should be negative that is decrease in the gibbs energy or free energy of a system in a process at constant temperature and pressure is equal to the maximum useful work done by the system or we can say gibbs energy of a system is the maximum amount of energy available which can be converted into useful work actually it is a measure of the capacity of a system to do useful work this is the physical significance of the term gibbs free energy and when we examine the relationship between the gibbs free energy and helmholtz free energy we know g is equal to h minus ts and we have the value for h that is u plus pv on substituting we will be getting g is equal to u plus pv minus ts and here we have u minus ts what do you mean by u minus ts yes it is the helmholtz energy a so we can write g is equal to a plus pv when we compare gibbs free energy with helmholtz free energy gibbs free energy is defined as the maximum reversible work whereas helmholtz free energy is the useful work and gibbs free energy can be calculated for systems under constant temperature and pressure while that for helmholtz free energy is the system should be at constant temperature and volume and gibbs free energy found so many applications since the pressure is constant but helmholtz free energy's applications are limited since we have to maintain a constant volume in our coming session we will discuss the gibbs energy criteria for spontaneity